Good morning. First, giving honor to God, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the Reverend James C. Simmons and the officers and members of Baber AME Church in Rochester, New York. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and bring you greetings all the way from Heard AME Church in Roselle, New Jersey, where I am privileged to be the pastor and serve along with my wife, Kamaria Bird McAllister. I'm thankful for the invitation and, my, and I'm excited to be with each and every one of you this morning. There is a word from the Lord. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, speak, Lord. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, turn to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, just one verse, verse 37 from the New King James Version reads like this. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him, Christ Jesus, who loved us. One more time, Romans chapter 8, verse 37 from the New King James Version reads like this. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him, Christ Jesus, who loved us. For a few moments this morning, I'd like to preach to you from the subject, I refuse to be a victim. I refuse to be a victim. A victim by definition is a person harmed, injured, or killed as a result of a crime, accident, or other event or action. And to fall victim to something means to be hurt, killed, damaged, or destroyed by something. As we worship today, if we are honest, all of us know what it's like to be the victim of something or feel as if we are a victim. And even as we wrestle with our own stories this morning, for the last few weeks specifically, our eyes have been focused on the news and the long history of black bodies as the victims of brutality and injustice. And if we are honest today, no matter how strong you are as a man, no matter how many precautions we take, it is not possible to live in this world and not be a victim of something. Therefore, the critical question this morning is, preacher, why would you name the sermon, I refuse to be a victim, and then turn around at the beginning of this sermon and say it is not possible to live in this world and not be a victim of something? Well, I've discovered that it's not, e it's not always what happens to us but it's how we respond to what has happened. We can't always control what happens to us, but we can control how we respond. And so therefore, when we say today that I refuse to be a victim, what we are in fact saying is that I refuse to walk around with a victim's mentality. I can no longer live like this. I refuse to think, live, and function for the rest of my life like a victim. And therefore, as we turn into the book of Romans chapter eight, we see apostle Paul telling the people of God that they are more than conquerors in verse 37. That statement alone is not earth shattering. It's what Paul says in verses 35 and 36 that bring context to verse 37. In verses 35 and 36, Paul outlines the trials, tribulations, and struggles of the people of God. Paul lets us know in verses 35 and 36 that they are the subjects of persecution. But yet in verse 37, Paul says, despite all of these things, yet in spite of all of these things that have transpired, we are more than conquerors. And I would suggest this morning that Paul is encouraging the people of God. Paul is letting the people of God know that they are not victims. They are more 
than conquerors. And when we look at Romans chapter 8, verses 35, 36, and 37, I believe this morning that if we study these verses, it will get us to the place where we can stand up and declare that I refuse to be a victim. Yes, I understand that there are many things going on in this world. Yes, I understand that there are many things going on around us. I understand that there is trouble on every side. I understand that many people under the sound of my voice this morning know and understand what it's like to be a victim. As a matter of fact, some of you may have been victims last week and some of you may have got out of your bed this morning in a situation where you are being victimized. But I believe today that as we look at Romans chapter 8, verses 35, 36, and 37, after we look at these verses, we will be able to stand and declare that I refuse to be a victim. There are some things in these verses that Paul shows us today that will get us to the position where we can say that I refuse to be a victim. When we look at verse 37 this morning, we come to the understanding that Paul is really telling us that he is not what has been done to him. In other words, Paul says, I'm not what was done to me. And therefore, we understand first and foremost this morning, if we're going to get to the place where we can declare that we refuse to be victims, we have to understand that we are not what was done to us. Paul highlights that those that may be the victims of persecution in verses 35 and 36. Paul highlights trouble. Paul highlights calamity. Paul highlights hunger. Paul highlights those that are destitute. Paul highlights those whose, whose lives are in danger. Paul highlights those that are the subjects of death threats, but yet moves over into verse number 37 and says, we are more than conquerors. Paul does not label them according to what they've been through. Paul labels them according to their connection to Jesus Christ. Paul never says that they are the victims of persecution, Paul says that we are more than conquerors. And I've come to understand this morning that if we are going to get to a place where we can declare that we refuse to be victims, we have to learn how to label ourselves the right way. Oftentimes, we have labeled ourselves according to what has been done to us. And many of us are living according to what people have said to us. Many people, many of us are living according to what has been done to us and many of us cannot move beyond what has been done to us because we are operating under the wrong label but this morning if you would just get to the place where you understand that despite all that you have experienced in your life that you are still more than a conqueror you still have victory you are still a child of God Paul does not label them according to what they've been through Paul says your identity is wrapped up in Jesus Christ. And anybody knows this morning that when you walk into the store, whenever they put a label on the product, the people that walk into the store treat the product according to the label. I challenge each and every one of us this morning to change the label on our lives. Yes, we may have been the victims of injustice. Yes, we may have been the victims of abuse. Yes, you may have been the victim of people that took talked about you and scandalized your name, but today you need to understand that the label says anointed. The label says that you have power. The label says that you are above and not beneath. The label says that you are the head and not the tail. The label says that you are more than a conqueror. I can stand here today and testify that I am not what was done to me. As a matter of fact, that is why our ancestors on the plantation could see beyond everything that was done to them because even though they were labeled slaves, even though they were labeled less than intelligent, even though they had shackles on their hands and their feet, they could declare that I am not what was done to me. I am a child of God. I am somebody. I am more than a conqueror even though you treat me any kind of way. Somebody this morning needs to understand that I am not what was done to me. I refuse to be a victim. 
But not only does Paul show us this morning that we ought to get to the place where we recognize that we are not what was done to us. We are not what is happening to us. Paul lets us know also in the text that just because we've been victimized, it does not mean that we don't have victory. I'm going to say that again. Just because we've been victimized, just because you are a victim, just because you've been victimized, it does not mean that you don't have victory. Let us look at Romans chapter 8, verses 35 and 36. Again, we will see that Paul highlights some things that are happening in the lives of the believers that would make it appear as if the people of God are losing. Paul highlights some things in the lives of the believers that would make it appear as if the people of God are suffering defeat. Paul highlights some things in Romans chapter 8 verses 35 and 36 that would make it appear as if they are under and not on top. And then Paul turns around in verse 37 and says, we are more than conquerors. Really what Paul is saying here is that overwhelming victory is ours despite all of the things that are happening to us. How can Paul list all of these things that make it appear as if the people of God are losing, but yet turn around and say overwhelming victory is ours? We've come to understand today that sometimes everything is not what it appears to be. Uh, people in the world will call this an optical illusion. When you look at something, but then get up on it and discover that it's something else. And oftentimes when we look at the scriptures, even when we look at Romans chapter 8, verses 35, 36, and 37, the way Paul talks about, starts out talking about struggle and trouble, but then ends on overwhelming victory and being more than a conqueror, it would appear that there is an optical illusion taking place here. If we could observe those Christians today, we would say they are defeated. If we could observe those Christians today, we would say that they are under. If we could observe those Christians today, we would say that they are indeed losing. But yet Paul says, in spite of what you see, overwhelming victory is ours. We are more than conquerors. And I believe that when you look at the scriptures, you will find optical illusions all over the text. Just call up Joseph as a witness. Joseph was a victim and Joseph was sold into slavery. Yes, it looked like defeat. Joseph went into Potiphar's house and was falsely accused. Yes, it looked like defeat. But at the end of Joseph's story, from the jail cell, Joseph goes to second in command in Egypt. And when the same people that victimized Joseph, his brothers showed up in front of him, Joseph declares that you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Sometimes things happen and it looks like you are defeated, but you have to know who you are in Jesus Christ. And we come to the understanding that God working for us is greater than the enemy working against us. Therefore, when people observe your life, you may look defeated. When people observe your life, you may look down. When people observe your life, it may look like things are not going in your favor, but they don't know the God you serve. As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ looked defeated. But as Jesus Christ looked defeated, we understand behind the work of Jesus Christ was victory. Therefore, it takes an element of faith to move over to a space where we say, I refuse to be a victim. I'm not living based upon what it looks like. I know it looks bad in our world. I know it may look bad in your life. I know you are up against a lot, but somebody can testify today that God will make your enemies your footstool. Even when things look like they are going downhill and you are walking in the valley, you can look up and even find a blessing in the lowest place just because you've been victimized does not mean that there is not victory in your life and God is not working. Somebody say today that I refuse 
to be a victim. But the last thing we see this morning before I close this sermon, not only are we not what was done to us, not only does God let us know in this text through Paul that because we've been victimized, just because we've been victimized, it does not mean that we don't have victory. Here in the text, we will understand and see that there is life after you've been victimized. Where is this in the text? Well, when we examine the text today, we will come to the understanding today when we examine the text that oftentimes persecution comes to the people of God to stop them. The point of the persecution was to stop the people of God. Therefore, after they were victims, it was supposed to stop them from doing what God had called them to do. It was to bring them to an end. And oftentimes when people are singled out and victimized, whatever is done to them is designed to stop them. That's why many people have a problem with the term victim, because it means that I have not moved beyond what was done to me. And this morning, how many of us are stuck? How many of us have been stuck in the same place for years? How many of us have remained in the same location week after week, month after month, year after year, because we have not been able to move past what was done to us? If it did not physically stop our lives, it stopped our lives psychologically. Now we are blaming people that have not done anything to us because we are hung up on what was done to us in the past. Now we look at a whole group of people and they haven't even had a personal encounter with us, but yet we are pointing the finger at them based upon what somebody did to us in the past. We are not able to move beyond what was done to us. But the powerful part of Romans chapter 8, verse number 37, is not that Paul says we are more than conquerors. Here, Paul lets us know that we are more than conquerors. The New King James Version says, in him. In other words, we have to understand who him is, and that is Jesus Christ. Therefore, Paul lets us know here, essentially, that there is life after you've been victimized because we have victory not in our own power. We have victory not in our own strength. We are conquerors not in our own intellect, but there's some Somebody that I'm connected to by the name of Jesus. And when we unpack the word victim, the University of Pittsburgh would put it like this. The etymology of victim is straightforward. The word comes from the Latin victima. It's the first sense in uh, its first sense is that of a sacrificial offering. And this strong sense is made stronger by the identification of the sacrificial offering and thus the victim as Christ. That's why when you look up the word victim and they go to define the word victim in the dictionary, uh, one of the last definitions is a living creature that is killed and offered as a sacrifice. Here, here's where we come to the point of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, it was Jesus Christ uh, that went to the cross one Friday. It was Jesus Christ uh, that was a victim of police brutality. Brutality. It was Jesus Christ uh, that was a victim of violence at the hands of the state. Uh, it was Jesus Christ uh, that died on Friday. And this same Jesus Christ, uh, it looked like it was the end. It looked like it was over. It looked like it was complete on Friday. And the enemies of Jesus had a reason to celebrate on Friday because Jesus died. But on early Sunday morning, Jesus got up out of the grave. And what we have to understand is that our victory, the reason we can say that we are more than conquerors is attached to Jesus who was a victim for us. Yes, that is why we can testify this morning and declare that we refuse to be victims because our power is wrapped up in Jesus Christ. It's not our own power. It's not our own strength. It's not our own intellect. But we are understand that the same power that raised Jesus from the grave is 
the same power that is in us. And even when we lose our lives, we can declare to live as Christ and to die is gain. No matter what is done to us, there is life after you've been victimized. And so I stopped by Baber AME Church this morning to tell somebody that, yes, you've been talked about. Yes, they drug your name through the mud. Yes, you may have been beaten. Yes, you may have been abused. Yes, they don't believe in you. But I'm here to tell you today to stand up on your feet and say, I refuse to be a victim. And the reason I can say that I refuse to be a victim is because of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The power that is in work in me is the same power to raise Jesus from the grave. And I am more than a conqueror. It doesn't matter what you think about me. It doesn't matter how you talk about me. It doesn't matter what your opinion is. I am more than a conqueror and I refuse to be a victim. Here this morning, we want to get to the place where we can declare and say, I refuse to be a victim. Yes, there are some things in this world that we cannot avoid. There are some things in this world that we cannot move around. But we understand that it's not always what is done to us, but it's how we respond. And in spite of everything that was done to them in the text, Paul, in so many words, is encouraging them to press forward, is encouraging them to continue, encouraging them to fight on, understanding that even though all of these things are happening to us, we are more than conquerors. Let us change the way we think and stop living according to what people say about us, how people treat us, and what they do to us, understanding that who we are is not wrapped up in what somebody else thinks or what somebody else does, but who we are is wrapped up in who we believe, and that is Jesus Christ. God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you.